set it at 86400. It's already set. 86400 in TV, I guess, in video terms means one hour. So it's 86,400 frames. So that'll be our start, which is this X that I made earlier while we were on the film bench. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, give the job a name uh, and give it an identity so, we can, so other people can find it in the uh, NFB when they want to colorize it and synchronize it to sound. So uh, officially, then I'll start off calling it um, Stock Shots, because that's what it is. Shots, okay. And the real number, if, I, if you can, I just have to get. And I'm just going to make a note of the, uh, the real here. So let's see, I think there's something coming up soon. And. Okay. That looks like something. Let's just see. Yeah. Okay. I'll do a preview. Okay. So I don't like the look of it, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on the I'll focus on the frame of film. Like this. Um, of our project. Like uh, I'm trying to um, output it so it looks uh, usable for the people who are doing color correction. Uh, so right now I'm just trying to find the best sort of uh, 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 all the colors in, in that frame of film so they can output a really beautiful image. So I know that I have my, I see that I have my, my blue, my, uh, my green, and my red. I mean, it's not absolutely the best. Uh, I was looking at this one too and I thought, no, maybe that one's more interesting. I see that one's even better because I have uh, the red, the green, and blue closer together. So it's more of a compressed image. So I'm going to stick with that, okay? It would really have to, uh, the, the scan would really rely on using the perforations as its, um, as its uh, reference. So I'm just going to save that, which I've done. The film transport, I'm going to go what we call archive mode, which means that instead of a pin uh, moving the film forward, it's just going to move forward automatically, uh, pinless as we call it. And the reason for that is just to, uh, to make sure that the pins don't actually uh, penetrate the film by accident. So by going pinless, we, you know, we're, we're saving the film. Like we don't want to destroy it. So now I'm pretty much okay to go. I'm just going to save my parameters here. We have 6,000 and we have the job here, but I see that I have to change one little thing. So it stops at the right spot. Oops. So I'm going to erase an old job, and I'm going to replace it with this one. So it's um, starting here, finishing here, and I think I'm ready to go. And here we go. It may tell me it doesn't like something, but I'll try anyway. Okay, now I'll go to the output monitor just to see what things like. It's going to go back to 86. Now we're going to, we are scanning a roll of film. This is telling me that it's the reference that we took, so it's going to be a little uh, sketchy here. But once we go into the actual roll of film, it's going to go back into green again, meaning that the reference and the film that it's scanning are in, they like each other. Well, we're just, I'm just going to check the output, that it looks okay on a big detail. Uh, that screen is okay, but I like to see it a little bit bigger just to see if I, don't, if I have any dead pixels. Or if uh, if I'm if, if the if the uh, calibration is off and let's say the film is moving back and forth, so I'm just going to run what I've got just to see how things look. So tell me when you're ready. Things are looking up. 